So this guy, his name's George, and George has a big problem. The SWAT team has got him surrounded, and it doesn't look like he's given up anytime soon. So this all started because George has a 27-year-old son who we'll call Trip. And George and Trip are really close. But one day, everything changes. Because even though Trip is only 27 years old, he has a massive stroke. So they rush him to the hospital. And while he's there, doctors do everything they can to save him. But unfortunately, he ends up in a coma. And now he's on life support. So George is there with Trip's mom, who we'll call mom, and Trip's brother, who we'll call brother. And they're all in Trip's hospital waiting room, waiting for an update. But see, this is not their first time in a situation like this with Trip. Because he's had seizures and stuff like that in the past, and even when it feels like he's not gonna make it, Trip always pulls through. Yeah! Regardless, this time, the doctors come in and they got some bad news. They tell Trip's family they've done everything they can, but unfortunately, Trip is brain dead. And they basically tell the family it's probably time to take him off life support. And the family is just torn up by this news. And mom, with tears in her eyes, she agrees. But George is like, wait a minute, no way. Why are we being rushed into this? But brother and mom disagree. There is nothing that can be done. And they give the hospital permission to start taking him off life support. And George, here's the thing about George. George has been drinking, like, a lot. So he's a little more emotional than usual. And doctors assure him that Trip has no brain activity. And George is like, no, we've gone through similar things like this before. He's had seizures and stuff in the past, but he's always pulled through. Just freaking listen to me. And this escalates and it escalates. And soon George is yelling at the doctors. He's yelling at the nurses. He says that if they'll just give him a few more hours, he'll be able to process all this and decide if it's really time to pull the plug or not. But no matter what he does, no one is listening to him. The hospital is moving forward and there's nothing George can do. Until suddenly, out of nowhere, George pulls out a pew pew and he points it at the doctors and he tells them to back away from his son. And naturally, everyone starts freaking out. Like, whoa, whoa, calm down, buddy. And one of the nurses calls 911. Hey, we need the police stat to the hospital. We have a family member with a gun. So George is there, drunk, waving his pew pew around, threatening to unalive the staff. But then, out of nowhere, boom brother jumps on him and they wrestle and he manages to take the pew pew out of his hand. But George is far from done. He looks at the whole room and he's like, you think that's the only weapon I got? So everyone is like, okay, I don't get paid enough for this. And they all leave the room. And George immediately shuts the curtain around Tripp's bed so no one can see what's going on. Then, because the nurse called 911, the SWAT team shows up and they put the entire hospital in total lockdown. And they don't want this to get ugly. So they're basically like, George, please surrender. And George is like, Nah. And the whole time, he's by Tripp's side holding his hand. And this standoff goes on for hours, with the SWAT team just outside waiting because they don't want George to go crazy with whatever second weapon he has. Here's the thing, though. George doesn't have a second weapon. He never had a second weapon. He just told everyone he did so he could buy Trip some more time. So they've been in this standoff for about three hours, and then suddenly, Trip squeezes George's hand. And George is like, whoa! He's not sure if he imagined it, so he tells his son to squeeze it again. And Trip does. And as you can imagine, George is overjoyed. Like, maybe Trip isn't brain dead. In fact, George is so happy, he immediately surrenders. And police arrest him, and here's his mugshot. So then George goes to trial, and he spends 11 months in prison. But here's the best part. Trip eventually wakes up, and he makes a full recovery. Last I read, he's fine now. He even went on TV and did an interview and talked about it. There was a law broken. But it was broken for all the right reasons. I'm here now because of it. And all this happened in Tomble, Texas, so shout out to Texas.